Everybody loves a saber-toothed cat. With their iconic giant fangs, also called upper canines, they never fail to fire up that old imagination. But you know who never gets the attention they deserve? The young saber-toothed cats. Especially those ones going through those awkward teenage years. And that's because it turns out that this stage of growth for a young saber-toothed cat is, uh, it's a little bit unusual. Because believe it or not, there was a decent stretch of a young saber-toothed cat's life where they had not two, but four sabers. That's like dual, dual sabers. In this video, I'll be breaking down the growth of saber teeth and saber tooths and looking into some new research, fresh off the press, that dives into the mechanics of their weird development. Welcome to the Scullywag Lab, I'm Dr. Rex. As a researcher of skull biomechanics, I can safely say that the skulls of saber-toothed predators are something pretty special. They had a type of skull that isn't really seen in animals today, but it independently evolved across multiple different groups of animals. This repeated evolution of giant blade-like canines has sparked fiery debate over exactly how they were used to bring down prey across both experts and casual paleo fans alike. While we might never know with 100% certainty exactly how they used this impressive dental arsenal, we do know quite a little bit about how the teeth erupted from the skulls of young saber-toothed cats during their growth. Like most mammals, they had baby teeth, also called milk teeth, deciduous teeth or primary teeth. And also like other mammals, they shed these baby teeth to make room for the adult teeth during their growth. But the growth of saber-toothed teeth, saber teeth, is quite a little bit different to the growth of the teeth of other big cats around today. Let's take a look. This timeline highlights the general time frames of tooth eruption in Smilodon fatalis and compares some of the stages with other big cats around today. Focusing on the upper canines, we can see that the baby canines finished erupting between 12 and 18 months. The eruption of adult canines began at around about the same time frame but the baby canines weren't actually shed until around 23 to 30 months. Finally, the adult canine eruption was completed by around about 34 to 41 months. Now there's two things I want to point out here. Firstly, the whole process could take years, with a minimum of 18 months for the adult canines to fully erupt. Secondly, for anywhere between 5 and 18 months, growing saber-toothed cats had not one, but two pairs of upper canines while the adult pair grew to replace that baby pair. That's four sabers! Now let's look at how this played out. Now even though the whole skull obviously also changed with growth, I'm just using an adult skull and focusing on the upper canine development here. Firstly, we would see an eruption of the baby canines. And these might have been baby teeth, but make no mistake, they were big as well. At around about the 12 to 18 month mark, the adult teeth start coming through. These would grow through the roof of the mouth just behind the inside surface of the baby canines. And these would eventually grow to be the same length. After some time, the adult canines would have grown out enough to shed those baby canines altogether and leave those iconic adult teeth to serve out the remainder of the animal's life. There's plenty of examples of this process to be seen in skull remains. I mean, look at that one. Who <laughs> would have had a face like a Freddy Krueger glove? We can also see a groove in the baby teeth that would allow more room for the adult teeth to grow in next to them and also help them combine to form this kind of giant extra wide super tooth. And yes, evidence of this process has been found across multiple different species of saber tooth predators. But the biomechanics of why these baby teeth stuck around for so long hadn't really been explored. And that is where this new research comes in from Associate Professor Jack Seng of the University of California, Berkeley. Jack's a brilliant researcher with some really awesome papers, some of which I'll probably do other videos of in the future. But this one time, I visited his lab and he took me to the birthplace of Buffalo Wild Wings. That's Anchor Bar in New York, by the way. So he gets extra legendary status for that. In his latest paper, he investigated how the shape of the adult saber-toothed canines influenced how much they could bend and how this changed throughout their growth. This was done using some pretty nice equations from beam theory alongside biomechanical simulations. One of the findings was that the canines weren't quite as deep as what might be expected for a canine that would best resist bending during biting. This limitation to depth meant that the adult canines would be at risk of bending more during biting as they grew longer. This problem might have been caused by limited space in the skull preventing them from growing deeper teeth in the first place, or maybe other reasons to do with natural growth patterns seen in the teeth of mammals. 
But whatever the reason, it meant that biting with the adult canines was probably a more risky process for saber-toothed cats than what we thought, and that they would need to be quite careful and delicate using them so they didn't accidentally snap them. Since the tips of the adult canines were so important for survival, keeping the baby teeth for a longer time would help protect the growing adult teeth against the forces they experience during biting. This had helped them learn how to use their teeth more safely. The combination of adult and baby teeth next to each other would actually have been a stronger combined structure than the adult tooth on its own. This means we could almost view the baby canines as training wheels for practicing biting with less risk of breaking the adult teeth. Once the baby canines were shed, the adult canines would have been weaker than when supported by them and more at risk of bending and breaking. So hopefully by then, the young adult saber tooth would have been well prepared both with a bigger, stronger body and with more practice skill to take down its prey without breaking its delicate, gigantic, enormous uber canines. For its own sake at least, not the uh, animal it was after. So anyway, for the next Ice Age movie, I'm thinking I'd like to see an awkward teenage Smilodon with a mouth full of crazy giant canines just jutting out of its mouth. Can we make this happen? If you enjoyed this content, leave a like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.